I wrote Hummingbird the day I found out I was pregnant, and I was on my way to a write with the Love Junkies. But I told Ryan, I was like, we're having a baby, and I'm on my way to this write. <laughs> Love you. I'll see you at the house. It was 2013. She packed up her Montero, even though the AC was busted, and came to Nashville. And this girl did not take no for an answer. Marin Morris has been running circles around this town ever since. And now she's joining us to talk about her new album, Humble Quest. Marin, thanks for coming in. Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. This is such a cute little space y'all have here. We Thanks. like it. Yeah. So where do you want to start? Well, let's start with the story that you tell in Circles Around This Town. That song is amazing. I know the first time we heard it, especially when you talk about my church in 80s Mercedes in, <laughs> in that song. And I think, too, just being moving here to Nashville and, and working in this industry and seeing how so many people are moving here and trying to find their way. I just feel like it is a story that needs to be told mm -hmm. and it's so important. So that chronicled your move to Nashville. Tell us about that decision. It was January 2013. Yeah. So I was 23 or about to be 23 and I was saving money for a few months to move to Nashville. So when I got here, I didn't immediately have to like wait tables. And so I saved a little bit of money to get here and just start writing right away. And I think it was like eight months to the day almost that I moved to Nashville that I got an offer from a publishing company, which is actually like right near here. Um, so this whole block is very nostalgic to me. Yeah. Um, so I was, a yeah, for a few years, a working songwriter. I would come in five days a week and write with random people they would place me with on my calendar and we would try to get a song to get recorded by an artist and or synced to a TV show or something. So I had a couple songs in the bank and was able to play them for publishing houses around Music Row and then I got an offer. And so, yeah, I, and I feel like now, almost 10 years later, most of my friends here I met through those mm. weird co-writes and, you know, one of which is my husband, Ryan heard we met on a co-write. We didn't know each other, but we just hit it off and started writing. And we written hundreds of songs since then. But I I remember the first time I ever saw you play. It was around at Belcourt Taps. I remember the the place was just quiet, but it was like it was the crew. It was like the Google S crew. It was yeah, you know Joey Hyde and Ryan Beaver and all of these people that. It has been so amazing to watch you guys all come into your own. But I think that's what make, makes Nashville so special is because you, all these songwriters that we talk to, a lot of artists, they find their people and mm -hmm. they stick together. And then you, yeah. know, you all help each other and you all become successful. And it's just that much more rewarding, I would imagine. I, I know a lot of young songwriters that, you know, they'll ask me, you know, what would your advice be to getting a record deal or a publishing deal? Ryan and I, both being writers, were like, don't, I mean, you can aim for the stars, but find people that are like you. Like, find people in your same, uh, like, graduating class almost, yeah. like your freshman class. You need to find people that are doing the same exact thing at the same level because then you get to all rise together. Mm -hmm. And so it's funny you say Belcourt Taps because that's actually where I met Ryan. <laughs> Oh like my gosh. nine years ago. Describe that to us. What was that meeting like? What do you remember seeing? Were you immediately like, who is that? Well, we both were in other relationships at the time. So I just remember I was a little nervous because I was going to get up a as a guest and sing with my friend Brett Tyler a song that we had written. And he knew Ryan and all those guys. I didn't. So I was like, yeah, I'll come and sing harmonies with you. I, I might as well. And so I met Ryan and all those guys, and they're like, thanks for being here. And, you know, they meet so many people. Ryan went to, to Belmont, so he was, like, already sort of, <laughs> like, king of Nashville in his own mind. But, <laughs> but yeah, we wrote, um, I guess, like, a week later, and we wrote a song that was terrible, but I just knew that he was talented, and he knew that I was talented. So we were like, we're not going to count this one. Let's write one more time and see if it works. And then the next time we wrote was a week after that, and we wrote this song called Last Turn Home that, um, like, a day later, Tim McGraw recorded. And so that was my first cut as a writer was with Tim, and it was a song that Ryan and I wrote. So, um, yeah, we just kept doing it. Like, we are like, it worked. Yeah. Yes. We're really happy about that. So obviously making this album definitely different than the first two. World shut down 
went into a pandemic. Mm. You lost your producer with Busby's unfortunate passing. Tell us about the process and how you approached making Humble Quest during this time. I mean, I definitely wouldn't consider Humble Quest like this pandemic record, but it, it was made during one, and it was born out of a time with a lot of uncertainty as a human race, and um, I think just all the things that had humbled me, like my having my son, having kind of a rough like postpartum era, um, losing Busby uh, as a friend, as a producer, just as a real presence in my life, and... Um, yeah, just not being able to tour for two years. It was a lot of changes. Yeah. So I think these songs, like, could have easily been super depressing and heavy and met the times in that way. But for me, writing them actually brought me out of the heaviness. And that's why they sound light and comforting. And even though there are songs on this record that deal with, you know, heavy subjects like death, um, but it's still, I feel like, leaves the the myself and the listener in a hopeful place and that's where I I didn't want to take it heavier in a time where it was like already too much yeah. like we're yeah. we're we're trying to keep our heads above water music should move you it should transform and like reflect the time it came from but I don't know if it necessarily needs to like drag you deeper into the wallowing depression. Yeah. So we've this, all been sitting in it for two years. We don't need to sit <laughs> We're done. Right. Yeah. 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 So obviously we talked about you and Ryan. You write a lot of songs. Um some that we will never hear. But the first song that you wrote after you found out you were pregnant, tell us about Hummingbird and what that song means to you. I wrote Hummingbird the day I found out I was pregnant and I was on my way to a write with the Love Junkies, which are Lori McKenna, Liz Rose, and Hillary Lindsay, my heroes, all separately, but then together mm-hmm. they're like the super group. Mm-hmm. And I had never written with them all as a trio, so I was obviously not canceling. But I told Ryan, I was like, we're having a baby, and I'm on my way to this right. <laughs> Love you. I'll see you at the house uh, later today. And I— <laughs> Is that how you told him? <laughs> yeah, I was like, he wasn't with me, so I was like calling him. He was somewhere else, but I was like, yeah, I'll see you later tonight, but— the test is positive, and we're having a baby. And it was like— We'll discuss later. Yeah, we'll just— I'll, See you later. We'll high-five later. Um, so, yeah, we wrote Hummingbird that day. And, you know, by the time I was recording this record and sending Greg songs that I wanted to record, it was, like, late 2020. And so my son was, like, almost a year old. And so he was starting to talk— so I recorded on my phone just Hayes saying mama. And so who you hear at the top of Hummingbird is actually my son. And it was just crazy because I wrote it the day I found out I was having him. And then by the time I got to record it, he was able to, like, contribute to it. <laughs> so, so Okay, good. so you and Ryan have some great date nights. I mean, like, when you're going to different award shows, next up is the Grammys. Yeah. Which is pretty fantastic. Double nominee. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm just, like, shocked. I am so proud of Ryan. He's gone to so many of these things with me as my date. And so now him getting his first Grammy nomination with Chasing After You is just like, yeah, this is yours. Like, it, I mean, I'm glad to be a part of it, but it's his first. So mm. it's going to be really special to be out there and— they're in Vegas. I've mm-hmm. never gone to a, a Vegas Grammys, so I'm interested to see how this all shakes out in, yeah. the, in the desert. That's awesome. So you've had a couple years to dream up this next tour. Let's oh, talk yeah. about the Humble Quest tour. What can yeah. you tell us about it? I'm so excited because I just got to handpick every single opener. We're doing like a rotating opener just yeah. so every show you see in any city, you're getting like a, sh- a brand new show. And so I've got... Like we said, Natalie Hemby, she's coming out to do a few. Uh, Joy Alatacoon is doing a couple. Brittany Spencer, Brent Cobb, uh, Rustin Kelly is coming out to do a few dates. And then uh, one of my favorite bands, The Lone Bellow, is doing a few. So it's like a really diverse roster of just genre. And I feel like it fit, it complements the record of mine so well. And I'm just fans of all those people. But yeah, I'm I'm so excited to see my fans again and it's just going to feel so good to play new music for them as well like after finally coming back 
And we'll see you December 2nd at Bridgetown. Yes. Oh, my God. That feels very far away. I know. It'll be here before you know it. Maren, thank you so much for coming in and talking thank to us. Thank y'all. Thanks. It was good to see you so soon after the ACMs. I yes. know. We're glad you came in. Yeah, we're pumped.